Welcome to Freedom's Light. I'm a little late this morning because I was in pain half the night with my finger. <laughs> a little tiny cut swelled my whole entire finger and it was just killing me. Anyway, no excuse, but, um, and then trying to get dinner ready for uh, Easter lunch, that threw me behind too. Anyway. But uh, here we are, we're back to laying our foundation uh, so that when the storm blows, which it's going to blow, and it's blowing now, that we won't be blown away with it. So the storm is raging in the U.S. like I've never seen it before. And, um, and I, for one, am actively looking and get it, getting excited about the Lord's return like, I, like ever before. Because I see all this stuff happening that at 57 I've never seen before so um, and I really believe that, that just this last week that he's given me a supernatural excitement uh, for his coming uh, because I've, I've never really you know you you hoping he's going to come but but to actually like really feel excited that he's coming I've never had that before um, so last week we left off talking about how the 117th Congress opened up uh, with a word of prayer to the ancient Hindu god Brahma um, by, and this was done by my words, and I think everybody will agree, a reprobate Methodist minister. So today we're going to open up with what California doing, and Colorado is right on their heels, and as we know, as, Col as California goes, um, so goes the whole United States eventually. Um, so to give you further evidence of where we are, uh, I want you to listen to this article, which was from March 11th, 2021, and it says, California Public Schools Ethics Studies, Ethics, proposes chance to Aztec gods of human sacrifice and cannibalism. No. Now, I really don't see how that applies to ethics, okay? I have to take ethics every year. Joanne has to take ethics every year for, to keep your insurance license. Okay, I've never had in ethics anything to do with uh, Aztec <laughs> gods, okay? Human sacrifice or cannibalism, and actually that would defy ethics. So it says the proposed curriculum calls for decolonization of American society and establishing ethic religious symbolism by introducing students to prayers to Aztec gods. All right, the decolonization of American society and establishing ethic religious symbolism. I really don't see again where ethics plays into that, do you? All right, so uh, it goes on. The curriculum further recommends teachers lead their students in a series of indigenous songs, chants, and affirmations. Public schools prohibit Christian prayers, but a new program proposed by California under the title of Ethics Studies will see a curriculum that calls for decolonization of American society and establishing ethnic religious symbolisms by introducing students to prayers to Aztec gods. It is reported that the curriculum includes an Ethics Studies community chant in which students appeal to the Aztec gods, including the god of human sacrifice for the power to become warriors for social justice. This is being understood as a means of forcing students to chant the Aztec gods of human sacrifice and cannibalism. The curriculum, if approved, will affect the state's entire primary and secondary education system, which consists of 10,000 public schools serving a total of 6 million students. The curriculum obtained by media shares that the solution is to name, speak to, resist, and transform the hegemonic Eurocentric neo-colonial condition for transformational resistance. This is the third version of the draft, and many have claimed that this version is a lot better than the first version that was presented in 2019. So, you can see very clearly that we are not progressing, as they say, because that's the new buzzword, you know, pro progressive movement, but whether, rather we are regressing. And which I think is interesting to think about in reference to what Jesus said when he referred to the days of Noah. So we are going back in time, <laughs> 
instead of uh, progressing forward. We are going back in time to worshiping ancient idols. And how interesting is that? I've taught children's church for years. And how many lessons have I done that have to do with worshiping idols? And sometimes I would think, you know, they don't have a clue what I'm talking about. You know, because because we don't worship idols, you know. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> In more ways than one. And we're going back to the uh, worship of idols. And, uh, and why do you think that is? Does anybody have... I mean, it, to me, it just is so ridiculous. I, I, I can't even comprehend it. I mean, I can just think our morals have changed. Our, you know, there's no God in anything anymore. The children aren't growing up that way. No. But why would our government be going back to these ancient uh, gods of old, these, these Hindu and these Aztec? And why, why are we regressing? I, I don't get that. I, I, I just don't get it. I mean, I would think more like we'd be progressing towards worship of aliens or something like that, which, which that's out there too, and that's coming. Mm -hmm. But I just don't get the whole ancient deal. I, I, it's over my head. Anyway, so you may have heard, you know, in the Washington Times article, now this was back in June 2015, but it's still apropos, is the headline is WikiLeaks, uh, Podesta invited to spirit dinner, host known recipes demand breast milk and sperm. All right. This 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 stuff is, you know, it, it's out there. And then we know about Hillary Clinton's. I read those, e you know, email myself where she talked about killing a chicken. Now, uh, you know, and now they're, they're not even hiding it anymore. That was scandalous in 2015. Now it's just in your face, you know. So what I'm saying is, can, can you see the Antichrist spirit system at work? And I sure believe we can see it through this coronavirus. And, and you can see how it's just gaining strength every day as we close this final chapter of the book and we close the sixth day. And I'm really going to get into detail with that, and I think you're going to really get into that. So what amazes me is that just as the Bible said, the Bible says that nothing changes. Nothing changes, right? He says there's nothing under the sun that hadn't already been done before. So that's why maybe, you know, we're going back to these ancient, you know, idols and stuff. I don't know. But what we do is we, we read the Bible about all this idol worship. And we think, like I said, you know, when I ta taught it to the children, that, well, it doesn't apply to us. Oh, yes, it does. And, uh, and, and uh, the U.S. is, again, going more... Uh, more that way, uh, regressing instead of uh, progressing. And here we are, uh, our government, our schools, our leaders, worshiping these ancient idols of old, just like they were doing in the Bible, just like in the days of Noah. That the Jesus said our day would be like the days of Noah. All right? And uh, so now, interestingly enough, since I mentioned the close of the sixth day, I wanted to point out the fact that since the discovery and the release of the Dead Sea Scrolls, we have so much more information, and, uh, and I think that is a, just one more example of the Bible saying in the last days that knowledge would increase. Because those Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient 2,000 year old copies of the Bible, so that confirms, you know, our word. But also, it contained a lot of um, information, commentaries, um, a lot of information that uh, has given us more information to uh, back up the Bible from. And one of those things I'm going to tell you. So, to give you a little background, um, the Essenes were, uh, um, or you could say Essenes. Uh, were a Jewish sect during the second temple period and they flourished from the second century BCE to the first century CE. Now the Jewish historian Josephus, and we have Jose at least one of Josephus' works. I tried to read it. I mean I could read it but it's, it's a little monotonous. It's like you're reading a history book. But um, um, you can get it. I'm, I'm, I'd imagine it's free online. I don't know. But uh, but we have one of them. But anyway, so the Jewish historian Josephus records 
um, that these people, the Essenes, existed in large numbers and thousands lived, no, thousands lived throughout Roman Ju Judea. Uh, but they were fewer in number than the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now the other two, uh, so really you had three major sects at that time. And it's interesting that the Bible doesn't specifically mention them by name. But So you had the, Phar well, and you had the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes. So um, they, the Essenes lived in, um, in a, um, a community in Qumran, and that's where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, and it was believed that the Dead Sea Scrolls came from the Essenes. Okay? And, um, and so um, they lived a communal life uh, dedicated to voluntary poverty, daily immersion, and asceticism, okay, which is being celibate, and uh, most scholars claim they seceded from the Zadokite priest who was a descendant of Aaron, uh, one of Aaron's sons, and I personally believe, now this is just my belief, but I personally believe that John the Baptist was an Essene. He fits the criteria. When you read all about them, the way he lived, the way he lived in the wilderness, what he wore, what he had, I believe that, and he was right there from that area, and his father was a priest, so he was from the priestly class, so he very well could have been an Essene, and, and I just think he fits the bill. All right, but the most interesting thing is, is that they called the Pharisees the sons of darkness, all right? And, uh, and um, they called themselves the sons of light, all right? And, and, um, and it is a fact that uh, the Jewish calendar in use today, which has bothered me, because they're 200 and something years away from the close of the sixth day. So in other words, they're 200 and something years away from, from the close of 6,000 years. All right. So I knew because of the diaspora, because of the dispersion, the calendar got off and all that. But that's still something, it just bothered me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when I learned all this about the calendar, I was like, oh, this is so fascinating. So I wanted to share it with you. So, the, so because of that, and, and uh, they really didn't know this until 1996, when, or the public didn't know this, when Israel, see, they haven't released all of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I know there's, I think they may still be working on them because they literally were in, some of them were in fragments, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so in 1996, uh, Israel released, okay, more of the, Dead Sea Scrolls, and in that Dead Sea, and in that release in 1996, uh, was was found this Essene calendar. All right, and not only their calendar, but how to use the calendar. It was it was actually explained how the calendar works, which was very interesting, and um, and so this is not the same calendar that the Jews used, the the, the Pharisees of the day used. This is not the same calendar that the Jews use today, okay? And, uh, but uh, what I'm told from the people I've been listening to who, who've done all the math and everything, they say that the biblical accounts match up verbatim, because the Bible is full of dates, uh, matches up verbatim to this Essene calendar. All right, so, so um, the Pharisees, um, and I'm not sure at what time period, but so, somewhere you know, um, somewhere during that hundred years, you know, of, uh, of Jesus, the Pharisees had changed their calendar. And it's believed that they've, uh, as hypothesized, that they've changed it to fit their own theology. Mm -hmm. All right? And, uh, and because they were not looking for Messiah. All right? And they thought the, they thought the Messiah was pre-existent and that yes, they, they, they knew a Messiah was coming, but that they thought he was gonna be this warrior king and he would lead this revolt against Rome and, uh, and, uh, and they didn't wanna be submissive to, to any you know, Messiah, okay? They, they, they thought he was gonna further their power, okay? So, so they came up with this calendar to, uh, to um, disguise the truth. 
Okay, so they, they changed everything to just further their political power. I mean, it's exactly like what we're seeing today. And then interestingly, the Sadducees, I've always heard, you know, the Sadducees were sad indeed. Well, why were they sad? They were sad because they didn't believe in a Messiah at all. Okay? And uh, they didn't believe he was pre-existent. They didn't believe he was coming. They had no belief in the kingdom of God as such either in this world or in the world to come. They just didn't believe in anything. And, uh, and then you have the scribes. Now the scribes were the men whose work it was to uh, not only copy the scriptures, but to interpret the law. Okay, and, uh, and while the Pharisees were the men who made it their chief business in life to embody the law, Okay, they were supposed to exemplify the law, and they were the haughty, you know, better than, better, you know, better than you uh, people, and you know, they're they're showing you how to live. Okay, so they're they're so much. They, they're the elite. They are our political elite today. They're our Nancy Pelosi's of today. All right, and uh, and so they're going to show you in conduct how to live. So so a scribe could be a Pharisee, but a Pharisee wasn't necessarily a scribe, okay? And that's why you see them, uh, you know, c connected a lot in the scriptures. So, um, so again, the Pharisees, they, they did believe in a pre-incarnate Messiah. They believed that, that you know, he was alive, you know, um, in a pre-incarnate state. They believed that, that he would become a king, that he would be appointed by God, he would be subject to God, and, uh, and he would be sustained and glorified by the power of God uh, for, the, for the whole purpose of the redemption of Israel from Rome. That was it. That's what they thought he was coming for. And so the problem uh, for them was that Moses had been the ultimate authority for how to apply the law so a prophet like Moses might threaten their authority. And that's exactly what happened. All right? And, and so they, they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. All right? So we can see this, this power, this, this political play going on here, and it was bad. I mean, I, I didn't even realize how bad it was. Okay, so when you read the Bible, I mean, and that's why these extra biblical books, these, you know, commentaries, these ancient Josephus and all these things are so important because they just build on, on you know, on the, on the scriptures giving us more information. All right. So what they did was they, they made a calendar uh, based on the, on the moon. All right. Do you, do you remember what, G, what God said the, the, the first day was? He, he said it was based on the sun. So when the, the, the sun comes up, God said that's the first day. But the Pharisees changed it. And they made a new calendar that was based on the moon. Okay? So they made their day start at night. And the Jews today, their day starts in the, in the evening. Okay? Like 4, four or 5 o'clock, something like that. Okay, so the Pharisees changed it. Now they're supposed to be these law keepers. And here they go against everything God says and they come up with this new calendar. All right, and so, so they made this, this new calendar based on the moon, but the Essenes calendar was still based on the sun. All right, and so they had, so that's why their calendar matches up with the biblical calendar. All right, now, I know I'm taking a lot of time on this, but I think it's important for us to know. And, um, and so I want to take a minute to delve a little bit more into the explanation of, of this calendar. So this calendar system that was decreed by God in Genesis to Moses, okay, uh, and uh, was, uh, was with the day beginning, like I said, at sunrise, and the new year was beginning in the spring. That's when God said. So the Sadducees used this lunar solar calendar that uh, that was made up and this calendar was used by the priests at at uh, the J Jerusalem temple when Jesus entered its court so they had already changed the um, calendar and the Sadducees controlled the temple in Jerusalem and the Jewish festivals were observed according to this calendar now um, 
the Jewish civil calendar with the day beginning at sunset and the new year beginning in the fall had no official status in the first century CE. However, this calendar of the Pharisees is usually claimed as the calendar in use at the temple. So this calendar of the diaspora appears in later Jewish documents such as the Mishnah and Talmud. And the rabbis who wrote these wanted to suppress the second temple calendar of the Sadducees. So you got all this political play and power and all this manipulation going on. And, uh, and so um, it said there was also a small minority of Essenes <clears throat> that decried both calendars and insisted on their jubilee calendar. All right, so again, you got all these factions warring, the Democrats, the Republicans, the Libertarians, the Tea Party, you got everybody fighting, all right? And uh, so we need to keep in mind the fact that the uh, Essene calendar kept track of the 50-year jubilees God told Moses to keep. So I don't have it down exactly, but they, they had everything broken down into... 700 years and then everything was broken down into um, 50 years okay so because God talked about the Jubilee and so they kept everything broken down into 50 years and then down into seven years all right so um, so they kept track of the 50 year Jubilee uh, periods that God told Moses to keep and this, and this solar calendar that they used began with the spring new year and, um, and the day, now they, now they said in the day beginning at sunset. I'm not sure I'm going to look that up. All right, so it said of particular interest here are the three versions of the Jewish calendar. And these... Diverse calendars were the result of different interpretations of the same scriptures, different traditions, and personal revelation. So the Jews of two millennia ago disagreed as to their correct calendar. Hmm. All right, so the lunar calendar system used by the Jews before the Babylonian captivity and during the second temple period was significantly different from the present Jewish calendar. Can you say nobody knows the day or the hour? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that I really think this adds into that scripture. Jesus knew that that they couldn't even you know decide on what calendar to use. So the present Jewish calendar evolved through the influence of the agricultural calendar taken into uh, the diaspora, the Babylonian calendar, and the Syro uh, Macedonian calendar. You know, so when they were taken over by Babylon, Babylon's using a different calendar. So the whole thing just got convoluted. Um, some chronological solutions to the dating of the life of Jesus are directly dependent on understanding the calendar in use. Okay, so you had to know what calendar they're using to figure out what, what is what. And like I said, the researchers have um, taken the Essene calendar, so interesting that it just came available in 1996. And they said it matches perfectly uh, the, the Bible um, dates. All right, so in 1996, um, Israel released these Dead Sea Scrolls um, that talked about the Essenes and contained their calendar uh, and the explanation of its use. Now, if you want to look at this calendar, I'm going to tell you where to find it. You can go to dsscalendar.com, which just stands for Dead Sea Scrolls Calendar. Uh, dsscalendar.com so you can see all the biblical dates and the interesting thing is the days don't move all right so every year so like today easter's on whatever april whatever today is sixth or whatever okay well next year it'll be on what well we don't know what, whatever next year will be okay so but their calendar doesn't move okay so whatever it is today that's what it'll be next year Okay, on their calendar. And I've heard the whole explanation of how they do it. It's over my head. Um, but anyway, so, um, <clears throat> so anyway, on this calendar, um, if you want to match it up with the Bible and you want to see, you know, truly when is Passover, truly when is Pentecost, okay, you can see it on, they've got it written on this calendar. All right, now, interestingly, I thought this was interesting. Uh, 
the Essenes talk about 12 biblical feasts, where the Bible only talks about seven. So there was actually 12, all right, that they kept. And you can see all of them on this calendar. All right, um, now, the Essenes, again, were a group of men who had separated themselves from the rest of Israel. And again, they were called the sons of light. And really, they would be the Christians today. Okay, because the, the, really they were, if you think about John the Baptist and how he was, that, you know, he would be a Christian today. Okay, and that's how they were. And, um, and actually, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls are usually thought, uh, like I told you earlier, have been produced by the Essenes. And so they literally had abandoned Jerusalem, it seems, in protest against the way the temple was being run. All right, so they were, maybe you could say they're the Tea Party today, okay? They don't like the way Washington's being run, and they go off and they, and they form their own, um, you know, organization, all right? So here's a group that went out into the desert to prepare the way of the Lord, uh, following the commands of God as they saw it, and, and, um, and the way that they interpreted, you know, the prophet Isaiah, and interestingly, they, they correctly prophesied based on their interpretation of scriptures, not only the year that the Messiah would be born, they said the very year, uh, but these are some other things that they prophesied. They prophesied correctly that Herod would be king but would turn bad, that Messiah would raise from the dead, and there was nothing in the Old Testament that talks about the uh, Messiah uh, raising from the dead. That uh, Messiah would die in 32 AD. Messiah would be for the Gentiles as well as Jews. And the Messiah would begin an age of grace. And this thousand years, uh, this last thousand years that we're living in right now is called the age of grace. And it's just about to come to a close. So, I, th I just thought that was fascinating. And again, nobody knew any of this until 1996. And so this group, what they, they go out into the desert and they, they get away. They're, they're priests, okay? They're all priests. They go out, they get away from everybody, from, from all the worldliness, from all the uh, corruption, from everything going on in Jerusalem. And, uh, and, and so, so when, and they did this about 100 years before Jesus was born. So they were not a new group that just came on board, you know, when Jesus came along. All right. And uh, so, um, so it would appear that the reign of Herod and probably even more so the reign of his sons and the Roman uh, procurators uh, probably stimulated a new phase of life of the Essene community uh, rising as a growing protest against Rome. Remember what the Pharisees were all about? Overthrowing Rome. Okay, that's their whole goal was uh, for Messiah to come to overthrow Rome. And so, um, so you can see where these Essenes um, are doing this and, in, 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 uh, you know, it, you know the, Jerusalem was just too worldly for them. And, they, and the Pharisees weren't doing right, they're not living right and everything. So they go out into the wilderness and protest and, and make their own community. Now it's believed that the Essenes hid the scrolls just prior to the Jewish revolt against Rome. And also, um, I thought a fascinating study was the Copper Scroll. So in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there was one scroll that was uh, hammered into copper, okay? And that, and that scroll, and, I, and you can see why they would have done it in copper to preserve it, okay? To make sure that nothing ever happened to it. And on that crop, copper scroll, it, it, what it is, is a treasure map. And it is showing where they hid all the stuff in the temple, including the Ark of the Covenant. So, it, so it's uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark is what it is. Okay, But it was all hammered into copper. Now, interestingly, that this copper scroll says that the Ark of the Covenant is uh, buried at Qumran. And, um, and Qumran was where the Essenes lived. And Qumran was where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. All right. And, uh, but, but I read the whole book on, on the Copper Scrolls. It was so interesting. 
And the thing is, Israel has let them excavate some of Qumran, but, but they won't let them excavate the whole thing, and they won't let them go down deep. All right. I don't know how big exactly the Ark of the Covenant was, but I would imagine you'd have to go down pretty deep, okay? Well, they won't let them go down far now. All right? And, uh, and I think that maybe that plays into just the end times, so that maybe they're, you know, God won't, won't let them until the, uh, maybe the third temple is built or whatever. I don't know. That's just speculation on my, on my part. Um, but anyway, it's a really interesting read. So, so these Essenes, they felt that the Holy Spirit was telling them to move out into the wilderness and that they would be the boys crying in the wilderness. All right? And so that was prophesied. And also, interestingly, they ran a school of the prophets. Now, Jesus himself quoted from the Essene writings when he responded to John. All right, now again, we wouldn't have known this until 1996, but when John was in jail and asking, you know, the disciples, is this who we've been waiting for? See, the Essenes were waiting on the Messiah to come for the, for the right reason, not, not just to overthrow Rome. And, uh, and so, so John said, are you the one we've been waiting for or should we look for another? And that was in uh, John chapter 7. And, uh, and so Jesus answered him, and, and, and basically answered him out of their own writings, uh, confirming what they had written, prophesying about him. All right, so I told you all that to tell you that the, that the Essenes also predicted uh, the, the age of grace, which is what we're in right now, and, uh, and that the end would come in 2025. Now, God does everything we know from the Bible on a preset timetable, all right? He, he is, he did create time, and he is, does everything on a preset timetable. And this Essene biblical calendar has, like I told you, set days, meaning that the days of the week don't change according to the date, like our Gregorian calendar does. So this is why they can trace the dates back uh, listed in the Bible and see when they happen. Such as such as Jesus' death, and uh, you know, we Good Friday. He didn't die on Friday. He died on Wednesday. Okay, and uh, but the Friday thing came from the Catholics. All right. So I don't recognize Good Friday because he didn't die on Friday. <laughs> and um, and anyway, but the year 2025. There was always two Sabbaths during the week of Passover. Passover Sabbath, which was Wednesday 6 p.m. to Thursday 6 p.m. and then. Yeah, the high side, which is always Saturday. Thank you. All right. So, but the year 2025 is the end of the Essene uh, biblical calendar, or what they call the close of the age. And they believe that the world would last seven days, remember, seven days of creation, or 7,000 years, which we see that in Genesis. And what does God say? A thousand years, you know, a day is of a thousand years to him. And a thousand years as a day. So in their calculations, if 2025 closes the age of grace, and they call it the final jubilee, then the final, they call that the final 50 years of the age. Um, and they say it's the final jubilee for mankind, and then they think, then they say, said that we would enter into the last thousand years that would be the millennial reign. Now, you know, I thought that was really interesting. Okay, because I've always really been interested in the calendar and the Jewish calendar. So, I personally believe that this coronavirus vaccine is the precursor or the trial run or the setting of the stage, if you will, to the mark of the beast. All right, now we know it's not the mark of the beast, but I believe that it is the precursor for it. Well, why? Because fear is ruling people's lives. And fear is causing people to make very bad decisions about their health. Okay, wisdom is not being called on or sought. And how many of us are consulting God? Lord, what do I do? Lord, do I take the vaccine or not? You know, how about let's just get, get real and let's just pray about it and ask him, okay? Lord, what's going on? And, uh, and, and, and this morning I heard this guy, and I can't tell you who he was, 
um, but because I didn't pay attention. But anyway, he was quoting his talking to his friend, and he said he told his friend. Uh, well, they were talking about the current affairs and all that stuff, and uh, he said to the guy, he said. Um, Oh, the guy, his friend said to him, he says, well, he says, I have to compromise to live. And, he, and the man I heard say, he said to him, he said back to his friend, he said, who said you have to live? <laughs> now that really hit me between the eyes. When you, when you're, which none of us will be, but whoever's here during the mark of the beast, see, you won't have any choice. You're going to take the mark and live, live here and then die eternally, or you're not going to take the mark and die. So who says you have to live? And that's where it's coming to. And so we have to decide, are we going to continue to compromise so we can live, or are we going to stand on the word and say, even if I die, I die. Because guess what? If you die, you're going to be a whole lot better off than you are right now. Living. So, and I, I'm going to have to stop. But, um, but I'll just end with this. So, so we know that Jesus is coming soon because he laid it all out for us. Okay? And now we have all this extra, you know, I think, you know, proof from the Essenes and stuff. Uh, again, uh, just since 1996, you know, telling us this stuff. And, and how can we get around... That, that scripture that Jesus himself spoke out of his own mouth and said that one generation would experience all the end time travail, the birth pains, and then the end would come. I, I mean, I just don't know how we can get anything out of that other than what he said. All right, he said one generation. Now, uh, how about applying that to Noah? All right, it wasn't Noah's sons. Noah didn't build the ark, and then Noah's sons uh, went on the ark, you know, after Noah died and were saved. No, it happened during Noah's time. It happened during that one generation, okay? And, um, and, and interestingly to think about, uh, not one drop of rain fell on Noah's head, right? Because God told him to go into the ark, and then God shut the door, all right? So he will do the same thing uh, for us all right and uh, and Jesus said that it was this one generation uh, that saw the birth of Israel as a nation after 2,000 years and do you realize think about your grandparents maybe your your uh, your parents my grandparents were born in the late 1880s now and I knew them all right now could you even fathom what they had to have thought back then reading their Bible that that this group of people that had been dispersed all over the world in 1880, 1890, even the turn of the century, that they would come back together as a nation. I'm sure my parents, my grandparents couldn't even fathom that. You know, how, how could you fathom that? And then especially after World War II and all the persecution and all the Jews are killed and everything, how could you ex how could you even contemplate that they're going to come back as a nation? I mean, it just seems so uh, absurd and didn't seem even remotely uh, possible. And uh, and so, um, but see what happens is now today nobody thinks a thing about it, right? And um, and and so we well it just happened and 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 I'm sure young people don't give a hoot and they don't think anything about it. And, uh, but, but he said that is the generation that will not pass away until we see the coming of the Son of Man. I don't know how any, I don't know how that could be interpreted in any other way. And, and we are uh, that generation. And just like our pastor's been telling us for years that, that when the fig tree budded, which is what Israel did coming back together as a nation in 1948, Watch for your redemption draweth nigh, and uh, and that happened again in 1948. And and Pastor believes, and I believe, and I believe that the the scripture bear this out. And now this extra confirmation from the Essenes uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, I believe that 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 generation, uh, according to what the Bible says, a generation is in Psalms. 
that is 70 or 80 years. So 80 years is 2028. 20, now, tie all that in with the calendar. Nobody knows the date or the hour because they don't even know the what calendar to use. <laughs> okay, okay, and uh, and so uh, I just think it's very uh, the whole calendar issue is uh, very interesting. All right, and then next week we'll pick back up um, uh, talking a little bit about Corona and the vaccine and, and the mark of the beast. So uh, so I hope you um, learned something and enjoyed that and um, it it raised some questions and I'm going to have to go research. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, um, there's just so much more there that, that um, it just makes it studying the Bible so much more interesting if you flush some of this stuff out. You know, and, and you know, who are the Pharisees? Who were they? Well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Who were the scribes? You know, and, and when you start really digging into some of this stuff and what they believed and everything, man, it just really starts coming alive. And and just putting all the puzzle pieces together and, and, and things start add, adding up better, you know. Um, but just think how God had to condense everything into that one little book. <laughs> you know, and it said it should be volume so big the world couldn't even hold it. So anyway, I love how he's given us these extra things and these late discoveries and stuff so that so that just to confirm the word that's all it's for is to confirm the word all right so join us upstairs at 11 15 for praise and worship and uh and i'll tell you what uh today is a very important day and i think we today just let it go by like any other day but you know what because of him because of what he did we're we're not going to go to hell when we die we're going to live eternally with him and I'll just end with this. I gotta tell you this. And I posted it yesterday to our Facebook, the church's Facebook. This guy's testimony that um, died and went to hell. Fascinating. It's a really long video, but it's worth listening to to the end. And he said something that I've never thought about, and I cannot remember the scripture that he said. I wrote it down. But he said God didn't have to. Jesus did. He saw Jesus, and he said Jesus didn't have to tell him he was undone. He knew he was. And he said, he said, he knew he wasn't right. And he said, he knew he deserved to be in hell. And uh, nobody had to tell him. And, but this was what was really interesting. He said that he knew that if God let him into heaven, that he would spoil it. And he said, he said, I'd probably be getting a pickaxe and, uh, and chipping up the uh, uh, streets of gold to sell to the angels. Uh, or something like that and, and then he gave a scripture that the Lord showed him years later um, that says that very thing and I can't remember where it was it was in Isaiah or something and, uh, and, it, and so he said he said can you imagine if sinners with, were, were allowed in heaven they, they would totally destroy it mm -hmm. and I thought I never thought about that and so uh, it's a great testimony so I would listen to it and listen to it to the end. It, it's a long, it's a long one, but it's really good. So uh, bless y'all, and He is risen. Praise God, Amen. so we can be saved. Amen. Woo.